Kevin Hoyer. sense it all makes sense um, so um, anyone want to guess how much this is worth 50 quid and how much did, did it cost me do you think 150 pounds okay uh, and this one slightly different age a bit more bashed up 25 quid this is good, good guesses i think and the last one hello kitty here we go <laughs> <laughs> zero pounds and zero pence and Raspberry Pi is all about accessibility you know making programming and that kind of the learning available for kids uh, and this is another strategy that I've been trying to push to happen in Morecambe which is why our activity is called shrimping and it starts with laptops and then it's scrimping and pimping uh, generally um, coming up with things that enable kids to express themselves but also give them the tools that they need because these are free when we get them in we can afford for them to walk out the door, and that's the intent. Uh, but when they walk out the door, because they're slower machines, they're not really as capable, some of the disadvantages that, that Raspberry Pi has in terms of processing power, memory, and so on, um, we want to do things to them that make them better than what you can get in the shops. Uh, and this is an example, because I wanted to show you in a live video, uh, a live demo, but it's not working. So here we go. This is an 11-year-old laptop, a uh, compact Presario, 700, which you can see right here. Um, and on the back of it is a whole load of um, LED strips, RGB controllable LED strips that have been attached through an Arduino. And the aim is to hybridize this permanently, and we've got techniques for doing that. So what we start with is uh, what was introduced earlier on, which I'm not even gonna take out the back because we don't need it right now, and we might never need it. This is an Arduino, okay? An Arduino is basically the same as this. So Arduino, again, thinking price points, 20 quid or so for an Arduino. That is also, to all intents and purposes, an Arduino. It's four pounds worth of components. And then we strip that, put that onto a strip board and we have kids solder it themselves straight onto the strip board. And they can, again, walk out the door for four pounds with something which can do the physical computing um, and hybridize their laptop to do something that no laptop in the shops does today. So it's just completely personal to them. So what I'm, th there is a, a kind of a uh, appeal here, which is that if you do have laptops that you've given up on, <coughs> in your cupboards, uh, if you've got something that's too slow running Windows and you can't really deal with it, um, it will be a value to uh, our project. We'll be able to take it in pretty well any condition, whether it's got a hard drive or not, although hard drives are really useful, they're like hen's teeth, we very rarely get them. Um, so then we can, um, we're booting all of these with a desktop that's very similar to the Raspberry Pi desktop, also runs LXDE, a very lightweight desktop environment because of the resource limitations of the devices. And then we just need lots of ideas and lots of people to push this sort of concept of how can you shrink a laptop? What kind of shrimps can you make? Um, to make it personal. Do you want it to... Um, I've had the most bizarre discussions with people over the last few weeks. We're going to be launching the, uh, the workshops in, <coughs> in two to four weeks from now. Um, so uh, somebody wants to build something for the environment agency which shows floodwaters as they get dirtier and as they get higher by having a great big tube of water <coughs> on the side of their laptops. And if they let it overflow, it goes onto their keyboard. <laughs> they like, focus their mind. Um, we were building, we we're running a, a sort of a test run of the workshop on the weekend, building lights to tell people um, when it is it's time to stand up, walk around, have a cup of tea, do some exercise. Um, and so as they're working, we, we've got lights that sort of, you know, they're quite bright, those things, when you see them running. Uh, yeah, so it shocks them out of their endless typing and, and uh, uh, deep vein thrombosis problems. So, you know, it's, it depends what you want to do. There's, it's up for grabs. Uh, we've got the tools for doing it. And if anybody's interested in taking away a kit for a four, four pound Arduino today, uh, I've got the bits and pieces uh, and, and we can get that all sorted out for you. So I think I've covered most things there. Would you like to do an advert for the project that you work in with Adrian McEwen? You do these days? Do you want to oh, well, how do we know? Yeah. Um, I don't, how, we haven't got how any how do we know? Yeah. How do we know? Yeah. yeah. Um, we haven't got any how do we know uh, uh, lined up at the moment. Um, my efforts are focused on the shrimping at Morecambe, so that's going to be at uh, West End Impact uh, in Morecambe, we hope, as a venue. Um, and uh, yeah, um, 
Same as Simon was saying, in terms of uh, you can always reach for an Arduino if you want to control some stuff in the environment, and you know that's a great thing to be able to do with a Raspberry Pi as well. So, you know, these are all the same techniques that, that are being learned in, in these classes, just a different way. The advantage of this being that you get a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse as well, and a power supply. <laughs> so have you got a Twitter feed or a blog or a website? Um, my website's just gone off line this morning, so it'll be back tomorrow morning probably. Uh, it would be, um, if you type laptop shrimping into Google, it should be the first hit, hit we had. Uh, so, uh, but it might not be in that, I think it's offline at the moment. So. I've got a nice lady instead of my own website. Um, but I'll sort that out today. <laughs> That's what you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to sell you real estate. Yeah, yeah. So it's kevin.com slash shrimping. I'll take you there. kevin.com slash shrimping. From tomorrow morning, my hosting provider. Give me some grief. But yeah, thank you very much. What's the minimum spec can machine to use? So, say again. What's the minimum spec? Uh, the minimum spec is so far is a 233 megahertz sat, uh, Toshiba 400 CDT, which is 14 years old, and yeah. just about run Debian. Okay, because uh, I've, I've got about a dozen of them you can have. Which kinds? Uh, well, I've got I think some of those ones. That one. Uh, <laughs> I think there's about there's about three of there's three or four co uh, compact. Um, there's some IBM ones. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what state of repair they're in. Well, that's, um, that's exactly I know some of them will work. And yeah. I don't want them, I think the screen is in a box somewhere. So they can it all exactly. Up. And it, often you can take two laptops, add them together, and get one out, you know, yeah. at least. You get bits of one and bits of the other. And, you know, the more we collect together, we seem to be getting duplicates of the same model, which is great because that, you know, really pays off for us. So. Brilliant. So, um, if you can't find my information immediately, de definitely have a chat with Alan because he's local and I wonder if I can find a way to sort of relay things uh, when I come down and do a workshop with you, Alan. Because a lot of this um, stuff is inspired by Alan and the desire to do workshopping with kids uh, at, at, at school and wanting to find something cheap that we could have people walk out the door with. That's why I've done this work. Maybe. Does that mean you program the same Arduino software? Yes, exactly. The point of it is it's USB connected <laughs> and Arduino compatible for four pounds. So ordinarily, the Arduino boards, the sort of minimal boards that you can build yourself, they don't tend to. They tend to assume you've got one of these as a separate thing, which is usually an FPDI. It's about ten pounds. And then what you end up with is a thing which you can program, but then it's not connected to your computer. Whereas this is literally, the whole package is four pounds. That chip is 158. This is, uh, this cost me 170, but I recommend the two pound ones because they've got another breakout pen. It's a bit better. Um, and um, yeah, so four pounds, all in. What's the chip on the board? Which? Which? This one. This, you said the chip's one pound 50, was That's a, uh, an Atmega, Atmega 328PU. So it doesn't have the Pico power with, for the stick. You know, <laughs> it, there's some features it doesn't have compared to the three pound fifty ones, which I've also got. If you want those, um, but for our purposes, it makes no odds because we're getting permanently powered off of USB. So we can afford to lose all of those features pretty well. Um, and you know, for anything where it's going to be permanently powered from a reliable, stable source, you can go for the cheaper one. But Simon's more of an expert on that than I am. So, um, you know, this is the stuff that we just about made to work and seems to be fine so far, and we'll keep, you know, uh, experimenting with it. So, sorry, Great. Thank you very much.